Hello and welcome to the worst of Power Rangers 2018. For the second year in a row, I am counting down the best of the worst. And we are going over everything that happened in your world of Rangers that wasn't, uh, let's just say it was the opposite of hype. I'm your host, I am Ranger Liz. What's up? Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I do Power Ranger news. And so at the end of the year, it's time for a good wrap up. So we're gonna do the worst. Next week I'll be doing the best of 2018 to count out the best of the best. See if your favorite made the list. And the week after that, last week of December, I will be doing the Ranger year in review, trying to wrap up all that 2018 had to offer in one video in your world Power Rangers. But enough of that, let's get to the reason you are here. That is the worst of Power Rangers 2018. I am normally a very excited, happy, hyper, optimistic person when it comes to Power Rangers, so this is a bit different for me to make a worst of video, but... Here we go. Do you have them in your head? Do you know? Or do you know what's going to be number one? Let's see. I'm starting with number four. I got four of the worst things that have happened. Number four, Power Morphicon. I know that seems really strange because I'm going to say spoilers, but guys, it might also be on my best of list. Power Morphicon is a very interesting thing. It happened. It was absolutely great, but there were some terrible things that came out of it. Things that affected not only fans that went to the show, but fans that didn't get to the show as well. Things that just happened while you were there. The ticket line Friday took forever. People were waiting four plus hours to get their badges. Friday, the floor was supposed to end at uh, 8, 9, something like that, and people were just now getting their badges. It was an awful, horrible long line in the heat. It was bad from everyone that I heard. I fortunately, I didn't actually have to deal with that. I got the vendor badge because you know, I had the table. So I didn't have to deal with that as much, but people that did, I am so sorry for you. That was just one thing we had on Saturday. They tried to shut the floor down early, trying to get rid of panels. I think a panel or two got changed or moved. Things were a little crazy. It wasn't quite set up on time. It, uh, it didn't necessarily run the smoothest, but there you go. Going to another part of Power Morphicon, though, was the toys, the Lord Dragon debacle. I talked about it a few weeks on the Ranger Week in Review. I paid $50 for this. This wobbly uh, thing right here. This Lord Dragon, not only did it cost $50, you're supposed to be able to pre-order it. You had to purchase a non-attending package just to be able to buy one of these guys for $50. Some people did. There was a, you know, I'm not even gonna get into what, what exactly happened, but there was a catastrophic error, let's say, and people did not get their figures. That is right, there was an error as to how many were available. Of course, that error was not known or so whenever Power Morph kind of was actually happening and they were selling them by the case that is right by sunday afternoon that whole limit one per person one per badge completely went off the rocker and you could go up and just buy a box of lord dragons if you wanted to this guy though however was a big issue with power morphicon along with the lines and everything else power morphicon you're fun but you also are the fourth worst thing that happened in power rangers in 2018 the third one is definitely more serious on the scale. Last year, I talked murder was one of the things. This year, sexual assault. Uh, sadly to say, Rene Nafahau, who played Mentor G and uh, Emperor Grum from SPD, the villain on that. He's wearing a mask. You might not recognize him. He was sentenced to one year of house arrest on six counts of sexual indecent assault. This happened in New Zealand, so it didn't really make headlines in the U.S. If you guys are somewhat new to the channel, or maybe not even that new to the channel, this happened back in January. He was sentenced. Now, it was bad enough that he was convicted. He's And this was in January, so guys, he's, he's available for... Uh, he's going to be out of house arrest very soon, mid to late January. But Power Rangers in May, I believe it was May 7th, May 8th, it was National Teacher Day. The Power Ranger Twitter account used a picture of Mentor G uh, talking about 
thanking your teachers for all they've done with him. Side note, his sexual indecent assault was against his students as he was acting as an acting teacher. Yeah, so he was the teacher, he assaulted his students, and the intern, or whoever they had in charge of the Power Rangers Twitter, did not know that if it wasn't bad enough that they posted it when fans brought to light the fact that these allegations have happened. Well, allegations, I mean conviction, had happened the first tweeter, so they deleted. In fact, it took a while for them to full out remove the tweet, never apologizing or saying anything of the sort, just erasing it from Twitter history. And uh, if you didn't hear about it in January, now you have. Uh, that was that was Saban, right? So we're not. Love you, Hasbro. It was just an overall bad situation, and I really, really hope I don't have to talk about murder or sexual assault or anything in the worst of Rangers 2019. I talked about this guy in segment number four, but he'd also fit right into this one. Guys, that is the toys. What happened to our toy line this year? We started off, I get, the Toys R Us went down. There are less places to buy toys from, but guys, what happened to our toy line? Not only were we so, we're so reeling from the fact that Ninja Steel had these foam things, it wasn't really a collectible gimmick, so that kind of died out. It really started showing the lack of paint, the Gold Ranger issue. There were just a lot of little things that just kept adding up and adding up and adding up. And then we found about Hasbro taking over the toy line. And so with Bandai losing the toy line, things just sputtered out. We got... Pretty much no new toys. We had one new toy, which was the Evil Red Ranger from the Dimensions in Danger episode. I did do a review of it, if you were interested. That was pretty much it. There were no, you're looking at Black Friday, there were no deals on anything. When Toys R Us went under, it was stock full of the not only Lion Fortress Zord, which was ridiculous. Ridiculous. They were going under. That was a $100 Toys R Us exclusive toy. It was going for like $25. It was full of the mo movie toys. That didn't move. The legacy stuff wasn't moving that much because it was mini helmets and more Zords and stuff. We've gotten it before. Bandai, I feel like, just completely let the ball drop and just said, There you go, Ranger fans. We're done with you. At least that is what it felt like as a fan, and that is what a lot of you said whenever I asked you what was your worst thing in 2018. Lack of paint, lack of finished lines, Psycho Rangers, they went out and said, we're not making pink or yellow, so you will never have a finished Psycho Ranger set unless you commission or paint one yourselves, and even then, you have to be lucky to actually find them. Finding some of these legacy toys was ridiculous, and now they're going out by remaking some of the toys that maybe you missed out on, on a few years ago. Ugh. Pretty sure last year I talked about toys being one of the worst things. I can't believe I had to do it again. Really, really excited for 2019, guys, and hopefully I will not be talking about the toys but before I get to the number one worst thing in Power Rangers in 2018, let me give you two honorable mentions that came whenever I asked on Twitter, what was your worst thing? Two other things that I mentioned. One, Hyperforce has not gotten a season two. Hyperforce, absolutely amazing. If you don't know about it, it was a tabletop RPG canon it's really awesome it was live streamed on twitch it was a three hour live stream on tuesday nights for 25 episodes it was amazing and it has not gotten a season two yet the other one that people told me about was tommy 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 and tommy being the center of dimensions in danger of course they wanted the other rangers to have equal time and they thought tommy hogged the spotlight what do you think, and what was your worst thing in 2018 to you? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something personal, maybe it was you had your hopes up on a certain episode and it sucked. Whatever it was, let me know. Uh, I, I really want to know the bad news. You can probably guess, guys, at this point, what was the worst thing in 2018, and unfortunately, 
there's a new award for two-time winner of the worst. It's Ninja Steel. Wah, wah. Guys, the season was just... It just wasn't good. It was just... It was bad. The fart humor. The fart humor. The fart humor. And I probably, as much as I give them crap for it, I get... I watch cartoons aimed at their target age range. There's Doggy Doo. There's the Booger Picker one. There's... There are so many crap and fart and whatever toys out there, so clearly kids like it. But, oh man, was it over the top this year. The characters didn't get much plot development. Every episode felt like filler. There was never this big build-up. It was three episodes for the, for, for, for the finale, and you're like, oh, Crap's happened. You had a big moment uh, before the half, the midpoint, before we get our huge long hiatus. And of course, don't even get me started on the fact that other countries get their episodes before we do for the second half. <sighs> At least they're not talking about spoilers for it. Right, but uh, we had uh, spoilers. The characters, I felt like, just didn't really get to develop. And we had... Maybe six out of 20 episodes were relevant to the plotline. How many of them just felt like filler week in and week out? And I'm not saying filler episodes are bad because there are great filler episodes that give you really great plot, really great character development. None of it really happened this year. I found my glimpses of hope in, in things like Cosmo and... The, when Coda came back, Super Ninja Steel had moments of brilliance. It really did the episode before Dimensions in Danger. Dimensions in Danger, the Christmas episode. There were bits where it was there, but I feel like Power Rangers... This year wasn't for me and wasn't for a lot of you, because by far, when I asked, Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel was by far to the fandom the worst thing that happened in 2018. But that was my list, and I'm sure you have yours from sexual assault to episodes just not being good, affecting one person to affecting an entire fandom. We certainly had a few downs this year, but with every down, there will be an up, so don't worry. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification if you'd like. I always talk about Ranger news. But next week, I'm going to be talking about the best of Power Rangers in 2018. And then the week after that, we're doing the Ranger year in review. We're still finishing up the 12 days of Rangers. Grab the image, and you can do it, too. It's been a lot of fun. I'm so thankful that people are enjoying it and participating. But that's about all I got for you. I'll see you Friday at the Ranger and Toka Week in Review, going over everything that happened in your world in Power Rangers and Tokusatsu News. My name is Ranger Liz. Have a great day, Ranger Nation. And I'll see you at the next video. Bye! Why is everything terrible? It's not terrible, Liz. It's going to get better. I know. Here's some other videos if you want to go check them out, because Ranger content doesn't stop with this video. And, of course, hit that subscribe button. All right, all right. Next week is the best. Hype! Let's do this.